Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Fearless. I saw a YouTube Photoshop tutorial from a channel called Yes, I'm a Designer, and they use smart objects. It is a Photoshop tutorial, and I thought it would be interesting to see if, without the smart objects, if I can work it out in Affinity Photo. So this is what we're going to hopefully end up with. So let's get started. So I went to stock photos and I pulled out this one right here under Unsplash. I typed in runner and this is a girl. And I'm just gonna show you just to save time in the tutorial. That's the photo. And I already masked her out. So she's all ready to go for us. And I think uh, what I wanna do is flip her around. So it's a range. Flip horizontally, and let's move her maybe right here. I think that would work. So now what I need to try to do is duplicate her. So I'm going to do Control or Command J to duplicate her, and I'm going to rasterize this copy. And I'm also rasterizing and trimming so I don't need, I don't have the whole batch. I just cut it down. So I'll just click rasterize and trim, and then I'll hide the one underneath. So now we have just one rasterized photo and I'm going to control or command J. I'm going to make sure snapping is turned off, turn off the magnet. I want to get a little bit closer. So I'm going to take this one and do control or command J and then move it over slightly. And then before I touch anything else, I'm going to continually do control. I'm going to hold down control or command and click J. And what it will do is it'll keep repeating. And what I'm trying to do is find a point where there's a straight line that can go down. And I think that would make it, let me see, like right down. Now I need to do some more. You'll see what I mean in a minute. And I think that's going to work. So let's take a look out here. That's good. So now what I'll do is I will take, remember this is the original here, and I am going to, I'm going to lock the original just to be on the safe side. And I'm going to take now this whole group, this whole thing and the rest of these and group them. So I'll group it. Control or Command G. So now that we have um, this group, we need to rasterize. So we right click and rasterize. And now it's just one solid pixel layer. Now don't forget we have the original down here. So don't worry about that yet. So now I never found a use for the column marquee tool. I thought it was a very strange because you click and it's basically, you click and drag and it's only one pixel thin. Well, I finally found a use for it. I think I'll do it on this one. So here we go. So I'm going to click and drag down for a split second. And we have to make sure top to bottom that we have something in it. And that worked. And it looks like there's nothing there. But if I am if I click on this layer and I do Control or Command J and hide this, there's a tiny, tiny line there. And that's a pixel layer. So what I'm going to do now is stretch that out just like that and now we can deselect and we're going to turn this one back on and bring her to the front and now we want to take this layer and move it so that everything kind of matches don't worry about the front we can get rid of all this front later but we want to kind of make sure that all of this kind of matches where it's in place and we will make sure it's not so see-through later. Uh, let's just first get to the placement. So the next thing I'm going to do, just in case I make an error, I'm going to duplicate this. So Control or Command J and hide it. I just like to keep the originals just in case. And now we'll go to the warp tool, the mesh warp tool. We click on the mesh warp tool and I want to kind of make sure that nothing moves kind of in this area where she is. So I'm double clicking to make a line right there that keeps it kind of in place. So now I'm going to start moving this and I could decide which way I want it to go. 
They can cross over each other. They can go under each other like that. And you can make that decision. I'm going to pull out a little bit, maybe like a little bit like this. Hmm. And I don't know. I'm playing now, right now. So you play to, you, to your heart's content. You can decide which way you want it to go. I'm not sure I like this. So I'm going to go the other way, maybe. I'm going to bring this down and maybe bring this up. Let's go out and bring this side. Oops. Take this side and bring this one. If I can grab it, bring this one down. And I think this one may be up like that. I think I kind of like that better. I kind of like this kind of twisting effect. Yeah, I think that's good. I think I like that. And then maybe bring this in a little, like a kind of a fanning out kind of thing. And okay, each one I've done is different. I only tried this like 10 minutes ago on the one you saw in the beginning. So now I'm trying this one and I don't know if it's going to come out as good. Sometimes the first time is your best, but I am going to attempt to make this work about like a little bit more down here. Yeah, I think I like that. Yeah, I think that one works pretty well and I'm going to say apply. So let's get closer again. Good. I like that. So now we're going to mask this. So let's give it a mask. Make sure your colors are black and white. Now with a black brush, I am going to take away the front of this. Now you don't have to, you can leave like where the hands are if you want to leave that, but I don't want to leave that where the hands are. I want this all out of here and I want this out of here. And I actually think I want to keep that one shoe like flowing from there. So I'm just going to go like this, kind of like that. Like it's coming from the shoe, going out. The pink from the shoe, I like that. I like the pink in here with where the sneaker is. And I think that's a pretty, actually, you know what? I think I might want, let's go back to that mask. And I think I might want to go in white. Let's just give a little more where this head is right here above. Let's get a close up. Okay, that's too much, so let me take that away. And now X, if I click X, it goes back to the black. Let's just get a smaller brush here and kind of make it flow out of the hair like that. I think I like that better. And I think that looks pretty good right now. So I don't know why. I guess because it's a one pixel, it's almost see-through, but... I found that if I duplicate it, Control or Command J, it gets darker. And each time I do it, it gets darker and darker. And I kind of like it very dark. So what did I do? Okay, one, two, three. I did five times. So I'll take these. Whoops. Did not want to do that. Sorry. So I'll take this one and this one and I'll group it. That's all together. And now I'm going to rasterize it. So now it's back to one. And now what I'll do is let's try some dodge and burn. We could do it different ways, but I'm going to just make it simple for this tutorial. So I'm going to get pretty wide on this. So when you dodge, it brightens things. And when, so you have to decide you want to do your highlights. You want to decide how much flow, what's the opacity. So hardness should always be soft. So I'm going to not dodge first. I think I'll burn first and I'll do the same thing. I'm going to burn my shadows. in. so think about down here should be darker because it's underneath. So I'm just going to tap a few times down there, which I think that gives it a really cool depth of field. So now I want to make sure I give a little more shadow in here, but I don't want to affect the top. So let's just make a selection. We can use the pen tool of what we do want to shadow. So let's go from here to here. I'll just make it a little bit of a curve. And basically we're going to shadow up here like that. And I'll click selection. So now if I do the burn, it'll only burn in that area. So you see what's happening as it goes down. 
it gets darker and I think that's looks pretty good like that and we'll deselect that now so that gives it a nice feel and then let's do dodge which brightens things up and I think we need to brighten up say let's go pretty wide see how that a little there and where the go a little bit of a smaller brush and we'll give this a little shine and that gives it a nice feeling of 3D. Um, one more thing, I think we'd like to burn one more time. And I might lower the opacity on this. And I think I want to burn around her. I'm going to lower it. Let's burn behind her just to make her stand out a little bit more. And she would have a little bit of a shadow there, maybe like that. I think it, it gives her a little bit of a shadowy feel and I like that look I think I missed something up here so that looks like since I already got rid of the mask on this one I can just erase that little spot here like that there we go so next I think I want to let's add a fill layer so let's say layer new fill layer and we can give it some kind of a color. I don't know. Let's maybe keep it into the, the tan area or somewhere where she... Let's just get a pick a color from here. And then work off of that color. So let's go maybe something to keep it in the warm tone. You could do any color you want. I mean, I don't care if you did a bright pink for all I care. But I think just for my taste... I'm just trying to keep it looking kind of cool like that. Okay, and then I think what I'll do is I'll take this layer and I'll give it a little bit of effects, like maybe an outer shadow. Let's see how that works. We'll try. I don't see it working, but we'll see. Hmm. Do we not see it? Why are we not seeing it? Oh, there we go. Okay needs to be pretty pretty wide here and oh it could be the offset I'm sorry there we go there we go so we have an outer shadow for the offset here a little bit I think too much just a tiny bit just to define the edges and then I think over the background let's add one more layer and take I'm gonna hit um, D to bring my things back to black and white take a brush a very soft brush, zero hardness, uh, and let's see. I'm going to just make a line going right across. Oops, I don't like that. Let's get a good a reg regular soft brush. There we go. And we make a line, maybe going right across a little more. And because of her, you might want to just add like a little bit of a bump here and maybe out here because of the bump here and I think that's pretty good and what we'll do with that is we will go to effects Gaussian blur we're gonna blur it a lot and then we're going to take down the opacity really really low and I think even lower it more like down here just to give it a nice effect and there you go so we did it without smart objects unfortunately i mean we have some sort of smart objects part of what uh, photoshop has but unfortunately for example you cannot do a mesh warp in smart objects once you do a mesh warp it becomes a pixel layer so you can't go back and fix it but i think uh, it wasn't too bad and i think it worked out pretty good and you can make some cool effects. You can do a lot more with this. I'm just trying to do a quick tutorial. So I hope you liked this tutorial. And if you did, please click like and subscribe. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.